So let's look at the 1954 Brown versus Board of Education of Topeka. It starts in 1896 with the Plessy versus Ferguson ruling of the Supreme Court. This rules that white Americans and African Americans are separate but equal. This means that there will be segregation and separate facilities, but in theory, they are equal. This way, the 14th Amendment is not broken. This becomes an opinion of the Supreme Court. This means further laws after 1896 are based on this ruling, which makes it very hard to overturn. By the 30s, the NAACP, based on the Margold Report, have decided to attack the equal part of Plessy versus Ferguson. What they realize is if they can prove that African Americans are not given equal facilities, they will leave the Supreme Court with two options. One would be to fund African American education to the same levels that white Americans are funded, and the other is to get rid of segregation. So with Charles Hamilton Houston as the chief uh, legal advisor of the, of the NAACP, they focus on graduate schools. And there are several cases, the 1935 Murray versus Maryland, 1936 Murray versus Maryland, 1938 Gaines versus Missouri, 1950 Sweat versus Painter, and the 1950 McLaurin versus Oklahoma State Regents proved to courts that the facilities given to African Americans are either non-existent or they are not equal. And by the time Marshall Thurgood becomes the new legal advisor of the NAACP, it coincides with a change in the Chief Justice of the Supreme Court. Al Warren becomes the Supreme Justice, and this is a very important shift. Al Warren is, believes that Plessy versus Ferguson was unconstitutional. So this leads us to the 1954 Brown versus Board of Education of Topeka, which rules that segregation by race in public schools is inherently unequal. However, while it rules that it is unequal, it doesn't come up with any judgment about what to do going forward. And Brown too, later that year, says that schools must be desegregated with all deliberate speed. Now, while this appeared to be a big step in the civil rights movement and an end in segregation, all deliberate speed is very subjective. Eisenhower, the president, said that no date was necessary for an end in desegregation. And some states, such as Florida, deliberately put layers of bureaucracy to stop African-American students even applying to join white schools. So as we can see, the 1954 Brown versus Board of Education of Topeka was an important legal step towards desegregation and civil rights, but there were still many obstacles, both political and social, that were still to be overcome.